Welcome back to Stories Untold. Let's begin episode two, The Lab Conduct. But just before I begin, I just want to remind you, photosensitive epilepsy warning for this game, so be careful. This is subject 12198623, new session entry. We have myself, Dr. Alexander Leading, assisted by Dr. Williams, and in the lab itself, our volunteer, Mr. Asian. We have Artifact 23 in the chamber, recovered from Crash Site B. At the moment it appears inert, showing no signs of activity. Mr. Asian, instructions for each stage will come through to your terminal, and we need you to follow them exactly. Now, some of this may be unfamiliar, so Always reference the manual on your terminal for guides on calibration and procedure. Once you've calibrated equipment to match our brief, the green light will flash, allowing you to trigger the experiment. One last thing. Ensure that any equipment non-essential to the current experiment is switched off. You cannot proceed until your calibration matches ours. When you're ready, let's bring this back. Oh, this is so cool. So this one has voice acting, which I knew would be a thing at some point because there was an option for subtitles. Um, we're doing some lab experiment with an artifact. What did they say? Artifact 23, was it? Must be alien or something. This is so cool already. <laughs> I wonder what the others are going to be. Like, they're doing such different things with all these different setups. Alright. Experiment 1, Internal Analysis. Subject J1986. Wait. Subject J1986-MEM is enclosed in solid outer layers. X-ray the artifact to determine its internal structure. 1986? That was the passcode to the door in the first episode. I wonder if there's like a thread of story running through all of these, maybe. Maybe they're not completely self-contained. Hmm. Maybe something was recovered from that house. Anyway. Also, when I loaded it, it said, hint, some, uh, some commands may be case-sensitive. I'm just noticing, like, X-ray and artifact are in all caps, so that might be important. <clears throat> so we need to X-ray it. Right, we gotta calibrate stuff. Uh, let's take a look at the manual. Okay, so we got an X ray, laser, acoustic resonance, drill press. So those are the four, I guess, experimental types. And then we have safety instructions and equipment layout. Should take a look at those. And they need to do X ray first, but I wanna look at safety instructions and equipment layout before that. Let's take a look at help. Press the keys bracketed in the top menu to move between pages. Press tab to roll over to the test chamber. Ah! At the chamber, use your mouse cursor to select and interact. Oh, this is so cool. I can actually do things. Uh oh. Oh no. I think I put it back where it was. <laughs> I hope so. Because I said everything needs to be off except the one thing that you're trying to do. Okay. Hold on, what did this say? There's like serial numbers on that. Three, seven, something's really hard to read. Anyway. Okay. <clears throat> Back to the manual. Uh, equipment layout. Okay. So the test chamber is the big thing in the center. Um, the x-ray is on the left side, one from the top below the drill, so it's this thing. I wish I could zoom in more. Like, I really, really wish I could zoom in more. Safety instructions. Use safety goggles and gloves at all times. Do not leave the container unattended during experimentation. Okay, so don't go back to the computer wall. Experiment is ongoing. It is extremely dangerous to handle any items within the container. Please ensure your next of kin is updated at HR. 
As per your agreement, follow all instructions ex instruction instructions exactly. Please ensure your next of kin is updated. Huh. Dangerous line of work, huh? Okay. What do we do for the x-ray? Required apparatus. A camera monitor set to x-ray. And charge the x-ray device. TV input modes. So the monitor needs to be set to x-ray. XR means x-ray. Um, this would be the monitor. There we go. That's the x-ray, right? Doesn't actually say XR. Just got the pictures. Yeah, that's x-ray. Okay. Um, camera is what? Camera just needs to be on. Okay, so we're going to film the artifact. Monitor set to x-ray mode. This thing needs to be charged. I think it says charging. There we go. Yep, okay, it's charged. Okay. Um, how do we begin now? So all that's done, it's charged. Now I need to release the charge, right? Didn't they say there'd be like a green blinking light when all is ready? Oh, I probably need to, t <laughs> I need to turn the TV on. Yeah, that would help. Awaiting x-ray data. Okay. So this button begins the experiment, right? The big green flashing button. Let's just make sure. Don't want to mess this up. Hmm. This is the laser. Oh no, it's on the left side. Sync master. Yeah, okay. Here we go. Okay, good work. The x-ray is coming through now. There's no visible damage to the surrounding organic material, and no signs of activity either. All output is flatlined. Okay, let's begin. So the artifact is organic. Hmm. Alright, experiment complete. Surface reaction attempt. Demonstrate the effects of laser light on the object. Try using a low-powered red laser to begin with. Okay, so laser, number two. Uh, we got different frequencies for the different colors. Want to begin with red. So we need the light generator. And monitor set to RGB, okay. It looks like a heart. That's the artifact? Huh. Look, it's just got probes all over it. Okay. <clears throat> no, so this thing's just off, right? Yeah. And we need the camera, right? Yeah, surely. So this is the laser. I'm guessing the numpad is probably for the frequency? Yes. So we're going to start with red, 650. Oh, looks like the experiment's ready to go. Okay. No reaction from first stage. Let's try a high frequency. So we're basically just like burning it with lasers and stuff until <laughs> until it finally reacts. How is it going to react? Alright, we're doing green this time. 510. 
Okay, we have a reaction of some sort here, a weak signal. Let's keep going. Increase again. Blue laser. 455. Ooh. Well, would you look at that? It seems we have a pulse. Rhythm is stable. There's no activity registering in the core. It's possibly damaged. Let's push further. It just looks like a heart, but obviously it's not just a heart. Test the acoustic resonance properties of the object. Begin with generating a 250 hertz sine wave with amplifier gain set to 1. I'm going to see if I can do that without the manual. <laughs> Just for fun. 250 hertz sine wave. So we can turn this thing off. 250 hertz. There we go. Uh, that's a sawtooth. This is a sine wave. Amplifier gain set to one, right? Um. Is this? Ah, uh, okay. We should read the manual. <laughs> yeah, amplifier gain. Acoustic resonance. Oh, sorry. That wasn't sawtooth. That was square. This is a sawtooth. Amplifier display. Yes, so that is the amplifier. Okay. Signal generator, amplifier. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I really don't understand why you can't zoom in more. Like, this stuff is so hard to see. Like, I can barely see where this is pointing. Is that pointing at one? I don't know. Does it just keep spinning? Um. Oh, it wasn't on. Okay, there we go. But yeah, you should be able to zoom in like three times compared to what we see here. Okay, 500 hertz, amplifier gain of 5. There we go. Okay. Seeing some fluctuations in activity. Should they increase? See the risk of damage. What about a uh, long tier? Okay, we're gonna push further. I'm running out of time. Let's switch around. What about our volunteer? I'm sorry, I forgot the beginning of the game. Am I the volunteer? There were, they mentioned three people, didn't they? There's Andrew, like the main scientist, there's their assistant, and then there's the volunteer. Am I the volunteer, or am I the assistant? I'm not quite sure. Either way, something bad's obviously going to happen. Uh, square wave. And all other settings the same, okay. Ooh. We're seeing good activity on this side, seeing definite spikes in movement. I know this might seem uncomfortable or dangerous, but you need to trust us and keep going. 
Trust us. So I think I'm the volunteer. Okay, same gain. Square waveform. Bring the waveform frequency up to 1 kilohertz. Okay. that maybe I'm the experiment and not this thing that I'm ostensibly doing an experiment on. Am I the experiment? The protective casing is off. Proceed to drill the surface. The heart was the protective casing? Okay. Well, let's turn this stuff off now. What's that underneath? I wasn't sure what this is. Is that... Just like an orb of some sort? Drill press. Switch drill on and drill all their equipment except the camera and TV are switched off. When ready, trigger sync master as normal to begin drill insertion. Okay. Parking. Hmm? How do you feel? Don't be scared. We have the situation under control. Take a few moments, and when you're ready, we'll continue. What? Make contact with the artifact. Open the test chamber. No, that can't be right. The manual told me not to do that. It is extremely... Well, it technically doesn't tell me not to do it. It just says it's extremely dangerous to handle any items within the container. But it also says, per my agreement, I have to follow all instructions exactly. Nothing works anymore, right? Guess I have to. Uh... Stay calm. We're doing fine. Don't be afraid. I'm sorry to have to do this, but we have to know. I know how difficult this must be. There'd be the absolute epilepsy warning.
Okay, look into it. Trace. Temporal interface conversion. You wake up in the cryopod, struggling against gravity. Rare. Remarkable. You can navigate its memories. Use the computer. Work your way through. So before I finish reading this, this thing's a consciousness black box, so I'm trying to recover its memories, huh? Uh, you wake up in the cryopod, struggling against gravity, you force yourself up. Impact into the planet's surface has torn a hole in the ship hull. Poisonous atmosphere spills into your craft. You are in grave danger. You have to get out of here. Look around. The craft is broken beyond repair. There's wreckage all around. An airlock door is locked tight and the computer terminal adjacent blinks. Use computer. You tap at the screen and the airlock door splutters to life, slowly opening with a horrendous noise. The ship powers down to silence, having spent the last of the reserves. Go to airlock. This organ was taken from what we think was the leader. These memories are different, they're not like the others. There's more detail here, less hazy. Lean in. You squeeze through the damaged airlock and fall to your knees on the ground next to your vehicle. Every breath brings pain to your chest. You look around to see you are surrounded. This is incredible. How are we getting all of this? It's describing the moment we found the ship. Mr. Asian, please continue. Ah, Mr. Asian. Yeah, that's the name of the volunteer. Uh, you look around to see you are surrounded by mangled metal. Bright lights pour through every gap in the surrounding wreckage. Look around. A crash site. Smoke billows from the downed ship. You steer your lights flicking on and off. Wreckage surrounds you. Looking upwards, you see unfamiliar star patterns. Look at... Lights? The lights are blinding. You can make out silhouettes, but you'll need to move some of the surrounding wreckage for a better view. Use wreckage. With every ounce of your remaining strength, you move away enough of the wreckage for you to carefully crawl through. The lights that surround you now attack your senses. Look at light. You squint at the light, trying to shield your visor lens at the same time. It is a circle of artificial lights set up around you to illuminate the crash site in the darkness. Behind them, an army of people, all staring. One figure steps out, a silhouette, and walks towards you. Can I greet the figure? Your heart rate is elevated, but you're doing well. For what it's worth, very few of our test subjects ever make it this far. You should be proud of yourself. Thanks. I saw like a doctor's name, or something. We awake. The room is silent only for the quiet hum of equipment and occasional machine beep. Your touch isn't yours. We are all as one. We move together in unison. Is this... kind of moving to the present? We awake. 
Is this me and, and them joined together? Look around. We are in a bed in a small and artificially lit room with a single door. There's some sort of writing pinned to the wall. Adjacent is a display monitor with wires that drape across the room and into our chest. We didn't put this entity in quarantine. It expired at the crash. Whose memories are these? When did this happen? <laughs> Uh-oh. Adjacent is a display monitors with wires that drape across the room and into our chest. They have tortured us. This may be the experimental chamber? I'm not sure. Hmm. Look at... Writing pinned to the wall. Look at writing. Stuck together are a series of flat sheets with symbols across them. Some sort of writing. Hmm. Can I look at sheets? It's probably not going to be any different. Memory action unavailable. Okay. Look at... Monitor? The screen didn't give anything away. Flashing symbols and what could be numbers in rhythm. Look at wires. A series of wires leave the machine and run across to our chest. Attached in different places. We aren't sure if the black fluid is going in or coming out. Collective discomfort. That does sound like the experimental chamber. There's a single door, right? Yeah. Let's look at the door. The door is in the corner. Uh, the door in the corner looked atmospherically sealed shut. So I probably can't use it then. We can't reach the door, effectively tethered to the machine. Can I use the wires? Pull them out? Oh! What just happened? What's that alarm? We yank at the wires, yeah, protruding... Disconnection in quarantine lab 15. Find out what's going on. We yank at the wires, protruding from our chest. Together, we all scream in pain. This action sets off an alarm echoing loudly down the adjacent corridor. Yes, this is happening now. Once again, what I'm typing in here is actually happening. Kind of like in the house abandoned. Okay. Can I look at this thing? No, it's not turning blue. Um. Use door? Specimen 20 left lab 15. It's on the move. <laughs> oh my god. That vision. It's not a memory. It's happening right now. Mr. Asian, I need you to stop what you're doing, please. Through the door, we find ourselves in an empty room with a device on the table. It looks familiar. They don't know how it works, but this host does. The door closes behind us in a lock, clamps shut. We are alone, slashed together. So the, um, the test subject or whatever they were called, number 20, they don't know how it works, but I do. Okay, look around. What is this device? Some sort of preparation room. There are markings on more sheets with a door and a window on one side. The door we came through has been locked shut, and the other door had an orange alarm light above it. In the center of the room, a table holding only a small device taken from your, it's, my, our ship. Look at device. It was an access code terminal for a wide connection. 
allowing commanders to commandeer other hosts. Only you, I, we have access to these codes. It's time to use them. And what would the code be? Codes? Oh. What is that? We haven't seen that before. What is it doing? It's using the tool we recovered from the crash site. It's in our systems. It's sending something across the network. It's broadcasting. <laughs> Mr. Asian, please. We deeply regret that we have put you through, but please understand it was for the greater good. We had to know more. Rebelling now could be catastrophic. You don't know what this might do to you in the long run. Well, they obviously placed me in more danger than I really signed up for exactly. Kind of forced this on me, so I'm not inclined to be very nice to them. Okay, so let's match up the codes. Match up the glyphs. Wait. Can this one not be set to that? To match it? I don't see anyone that matches it. Are all these codes the same in all rows? Yes. Try to see if any of this information over here matters. I don't think so. I don't know what it means. Oh! I think it was flashing him at me. Uh, oh, Jesus. Um... Christ, it is flashing him at me. That's really hard to look at. Oof. Um, <laughs> Christ, okay, I need to identify something. Uh, it's like a translation table, I think, I'm assuming. Jesus. Okay, we can do this. I don't know if I can do it. I wish it was more zoomed out. so fast. Bar on the left. Okay, hold on. Bar on the left equals... I just want to get one. Okay. Bar on the left is this one here. Equals... I think it was that one? Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, it's that one. Okay, so after bar on the left, we got this one. I'm assuming these are in order, are they? They might not be. I'm gonna assume they're not in order. And just look for the right symbol. Here we go. Is that one? Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. Yeah, that's the one. Okay. One. No. Uh, next one has like a cane on the left side and then a square on the top right. Cane on the left side. There. One, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. Four, one, two, three, four. Okay. I think it's that. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. No, that's not it. Oh, I think it's that one. Yeah, it's gotta be. Okay. Well, this one I could probably just do by trial and error, right? There we go. Ooh. Uh... <laughs> 
<laughs> I helped them. So... They'll take care of me now, right? I'm gonna click it. such a cool little story. I wonder if there's multiple endings to these. Like, could I have chosen not to do it? I'm pretty sure I had to. I get the impression there's really no other option. Wow, oh, that was so cool. I was a little bit worried because when I looked over some reviews for Stories Untold, I heard some people say that the first episode, The House Abandoned, was really good and the others kind of fell a bit short, but if you ask me, that one was just as good as the first one. Alright, so that has been The Lab Conduct. I hope you've enjoyed, and when I return, we're going to play Episode 3, The Station Process.